My name is Harold R. Neely III. I was a, a Raiderman, uh, third class. I uh, joined the Navy uh, in uh, September. Uh, went to a nor normal, uh, well, actually, they came to school in our high school. And uh, they uh, sort of like, you want to come in? And I said, yeah. So I signed up when I graduated high school in 63. Okay. And went in right after I graduated in September. And uh, then I went to Great Lakes for my basic. And I went to A school from there into Great Lakes. And then I uh, did some other schooling. San Diego for about a month or so, and then I went to the ship in Norfolk and uh, waited for her to be commissioned. So we did a lot of pre-con and uh, more schooling and learning more about the ship and what heck we had to do was firefighting and damage control and uh, so it was a lot of marching and we're called plank owners. When we were, when we actually were doing the ship and getting it ready and dedicating, those guys were considered plank owners. It's huge longest ship and you figured where am I gonna stay you know where am I gonna be birthed and what have you and for the first month we um, uh, were a mess cooking and I had the good luck of being a mess cook for the chief petty officer so we uh, took care of all the chiefs and when uh, we did their three meals then we went back to our birthing compartments and then we got up early in the morning and started all over and it was, we did that for three, three months, and then I went up to, to my division and uh, started my job from there. It was very, um, I don't say fast pace, but it was a steady pace. It was, uh, we worked uh, seven hours on, five hours off, and five hours off, and seven hours on. So it was a rotating 12 and 12. And uh, so when you weren't sleeping during the day, you were probably cleaning your cleaning station. And uh, any extra time, you write letters or do whatever you wanted to do. Uh, the food was great. The conditions were also different. Uh, we had a three-tiered bunking situation. Uh, being the low man, I left the low bunk. And every morning, you had to make sure you lifted it up and chained it in place so they could sleep underneath. But uh, we had no privacy as far as... Um, like the newer ships, they have privacy curtains. We didn't have that. So if we wanted any privacy curtains, we took our, our uh, blankets and hung them up underneath the, the top, or bunk, top bunk and hang down. But so, but it didn't bother me. It was a very um, ex good experience. I was a radarman. I, uh, my job was to um, look at the surface search radar screen and um, just point out uh, and on our, our screens and mark all the ships that were around us and watch the screen in general. So if there was another uh, ship that we didn't ha have uh, no idea what it was, we would track it for a while and they would find out what it was and we would mark it down. And uh, then when the last year that I was aboard, I was the, uh, on, the sh on the bridge doing my job and if we had VIPs coming aboard, the captain would send him o them over, and I would give them a brief explana uh, explanation as to what I was doing and, and what have you. All of them were very polite. We had an admiral board. He treated the guys like uh, gods. All the men. I mean, he was so polite. Uh, we never had a bad. I never had a bad word about the admiral. And I was in his bridge a couple times due to my job, and um, he uh, was gung ho about everything, and he wanted to. This was the men. The men were behind all this, and he took care of us real well. Just before I was due to get off ship, um, I knew the captain, because uh, I was his JA talker during general quarters, and I knew I was good uh, relationship with the uh, commanding officer of the navigation department, which was right behind the bridge. And it was up to him and the captain uh, to let me stand behind the helm of the carrier and steer the ship. Not my normal job, and uh, they let me do it. Um, getting behind the helm, and then the um, fellow that normally did that job uh, was standing right by me, and telling me exactly what I had to do. He says, just turn, when they tell you what to turn to and what have you, he says, turn to that degree slowly, and then when the arrow gets, starts getting it, you start backing off, so that it comes right up to it. And so when the OD of the bridge said left 20 degrees rudder or 10 degrees rudder or whatever it was, 
uh, to whatever degree, you know, to wherever we're stirring, mm -hmm. and I was supposed to respond, and I did not respond. And he says, uh, left 10 degrees rudder, you know, to 270. So I didn't hear anything. Oh, left two degrees, whatever, yes, sir, uh, whatever. <laughs> and of course, done. But I was so shaky. But once my division, because we had men on the bridge, found out that I was behind the helm, all I heard was they were passing it down. Neely's at the helm, abandoned ship. So that was my best response. But what a, what a, a, a feeling. My last day aboard ship was, um, I would already been packed the night before. I'd already counted the days months in advance. So the, they had enlisted a whole bunch of fellas that were leaving. And I heard my name aboard, you know, uh, Neely uh, um, and my rank and what have you uh, departing. And so, man, get a couple tears in here.